Forum, and today's topic is the Meteorological uh, Simulation Data Ingest System, MATIS. Our presenter today is uh, Steve Pritchett from the Office of Science and Technology. Uh, we are recording this um, today uh, for using a different technology. Our intent is to is to put the recording uh, along with this presentation on on the RIT forum webpage after after the session here. Uh, so uh, the way this will work is that Steve will give the presentation and everyone is muted. If you wish to ask a question, then um, please raise your hand using the GoToMeeting and we will uh, unmute you to allow you to ask the question. Um, so, with, so the normal format, just to repeat for everyone, uh, we will have, Steve will give approximately a 30 minute presentation and then we'll follow that up with uh, Q&A. Before I start, because of, um, we've closed this window, do I need to open it again to see raise hands? Um, there will be a brief, you know, it'll, it'll say something like so and so has raised his hand. But yeah, if you, so the answer is no, you don't have to. Plus, you just keep an eye on that. Okay, Steve, so uh, take, take it away. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. As Steve said, my name is Steve Pritchett. I'm the National Weather Service MATIS project manager. Um, just to let you all know, my colleague Greg Pratt from OAR uh, Global Systems Division in Boulder is on the line as well, and he is the OAR MATIS project developer, and we have a, a strong collaborative relationship between OS&T and uh, OAR GSD. So today uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, MATIS. It is a transition project. I'll begin with a, a bit of a MATIS refresher, uh, just the business case for MATIS and the MATIS transition project itself. And after that, we can have some questions. So uh, MATIS is a, a project to integrate data sets. There's about 60 non-NOAA, 60,000 non-NOAA unique observing uh, platforms that are being brought into MATIS every day, about 12 million unique observations. And MATIS uh, provides the ingest data formatting, quality control, and distribution. Um, it made it originally was initiated in 2001 and it's been a project that's been jointly uh, run and developed between OAR and uh, NWS. And uh, this first section on the Matis refresher, uh, I've got hyperlinks built in uh, all through this. So if you download uh, the briefing afterwards, uh, it's a great reference for actually using the MATA system. Back here. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the MATA uh, data, there's, there's a number of data sources that come in through MATA. Uh, there is uh, the meteorological surface observations, METARs, uh, maritime data, the uh, uh, mesonet data, and uh, the climate reference data. Uh, we have upper air data that we're bringing in, um, MedCars data, the automated aircraft data, and a host of other uh, data sets that uh, you can see from the screen here. Now, some of the data sources that MATA is bringing in are restricted by the data providers. So we have three classes of uh, data users, and uh, they include um, one class is uh, for government research and educational organizations. Another class is completely unrestricted data sources, and another class is for uh, NOAA use only. And uh, we have controls within MATA, so uh, when you sign the user agreements, you're restricted to only those uh, data sources that apply to you. 
and uh, I list some of the data sets on the slide here. I won't, I won't read them all, but uh, you're welcome, as I said, to download the presentation and look at this more. And there, the hyperlinks link to all of the data sets. Uh, again, uh, the MANUS brings the data in and stores all the data as net CDF files. Here's the hyperlink explaining the uh, data formatting. And back to this again. Okay. And uh, we also have an API that we're, we make available through the website for people to download uh, to display the data. And you can uh, display it through a, different, uh, a number of different formats. And it can be graphically or, or text displayed. So uh, if you want to become a data user, uh, we have an application page where you can go and apply to be a user of the data. All, all MADIS data uh, usage is through subscription. So we have a, a number of, you can uh, go to this site, apply uh, to become a subscriber, and uh, it describes the way you're going to access the data, who you are, and so on. Again, um, the the data is made available in a graphic uh, in graphic formats. So we have that the the RSIS grids are available uh, every hour that you can look at and look at uh, the displays of the data. And uh, right now we have about 700 users. So this is far beyond just the weather service using the MADIS data. There are a number of institutions, academic, federal agencies, private uh, users. So it's it really got a, lo a wide usage right now. And here's just a sample of some of the users from AccuWeather, the WFOs, uh, NSEP, just across the board. It, it's got a really broad usage. So uh, again, there's more information that I'm making available uh, for those of you who are not familiar with MADIS. There's hyperlinks to all the information and types of displays that we have available through MADIS. And we also have an archive, so you can display either real time or any of the archived data that we've had since 2001. We've archived all the data. It's all available um, for you to come and access. So uh, we have a, a, a data provider agreement right now in MADIS that you go to the website and fill out an agreement. As we go through the transition of MADIS to operations, uh, we have a, a new policy in place in the Weather Service that calls for a bit more stringent agreements than we've had in the past when the system's been primarily residing in OAR. Uh, the new agreements comply with a Weather Service policy directive that was put in place in 2009 that says there needs to be uh, written agreements between the National Weather Service and any of the providers. So we are just now starting to develop those agreements. And in the past couple of weeks, uh, the Office of Climate, Water, and Weather Services has gone out and started talking to some of the state DOT providers to uh, work on some of those agreements. And this is an example of uh, one of the agreements that we're going to be putting into place. So 
we have made this. It was developed, as I've said before, to integrate quality control and distribute observations and leverage all the observations that are out there uh, far beyond just what NOAA is providing. So we have basically one-stop shopping for all the observations across the country. And, uh, and in doing so, we have a far higher resolution of observations than we would have with only the NOAA observations or just one particular mezzanine or academic or private institutions of observations. And here's an example of uh, just the NOAA observations on the left and on the right uh, observations with all the MATIS data sets built into it. And you can see it's a far higher resolution of data and uh, with uh, just uh, an order of magnitude at least of uh, much higher resolution data. And uh, another reason that we're bringing uh, MATIS into operations is MATIS becomes a, a critical data set and data outlet for the uh, 40 cube, the next gen, supporting uh, the future of the agency where we're going and providing high resolution data for customers. So up until 2007, MATIS was a strictly in, owned and operated outside of the Weather Service. It was run at Boulder by OAR. In 2008, uh, the NOAA Annual Guidance Memorandum said we need to transition projects into operations better, and they specifically called out MATIS, and they said we need to transition MATIS fully to operations. So we developed a, a project and that's what we've got going now here is the MATIS transition project. And it's actually been a pathfinder for a lot of the uh, transition projects because there have been so many uh, similar problems that we've seen across the board. Now, MATIS has got three NOAA line offices involved in, in collaborating in the transition. It's the National Weather Service, uh, OAR, and NESDIS. And in uh, this year, earlier this year, uh, the uh, AAs from all three of the line offices signed a letter of agreement as we reset the strategy to get to uh, full operating capability for MATIS. And we've seen a lot of these issues that are common with transition from research to operation. Uh, in NOAA, we've seen the, the issues with diverse IT security policies, um, just basic policies such as uh, the one I just talked about where OAR really didn't have a, a real strong uh, provider agreement. The National Weather Service has far stringent, more stringent policies for provider agreements. Uh, uh, significant issues with budget and staffing we've come across and just uh, understanding and clarifying roles and responsibilities. Initially, we had a letter of agreement in 2008 that essentially uh, kept OAR in the MATIS business for the foreseeable future for throughout this decade. And it, it was really um, uh, understanding of roles and responsibilities in transitioning programs. And when we revised the strategy in 2012, uh, by somewhere in 2014, OAR is no longer involved in the operations of MATIS and it's strictly a National Weather Service uh, service for operating MATIS with support from NCDC for the archiving. Okay, so just again a little bit more on the history of the research to operations. Um, I've been over some of this. Um, we the effort seriously began in 2007 in the Office of Operational Assistance. Uh, they started developing uh, uh, with working with OAR. They were going to uh, develop a system that was going to run out of uh, Weather Service headquarters. 
And there was some issues, so an independent review team of senior executives from across the Department of Commerce, there were some executives from uh, uh, NIST and uh, from other parts of NOAA looked at the best uh, way we should uh, set up MATIS, and they decided to go with a distributed system. They recommended that we go with a distributed system of having uh, the ingest and the uh, data processing in two different places, the ingest in the gateway and the data processing in uh, NCO at uh, the NCEP central operations. And that's the way we've been going, and that's the way we're currently aligned right now. Uh, we achieved initial operating capability for the National Weather Service, where we're running uh, the operational system with the IO components of MATIS sitting in the top today, and the processing being done on the supercomputer over at NCO. And uh, as I said, we, re we did some revisions of the strategy. It uh, took us about a year uh, in reviews to uh, decide exactly how to go, and, and that culminated in a new letter of agreement that uh, all the AA signed in 2012. And, and that set the strategy for uh, getting to full operating capability in early 2014. Uh, but right now, the NWS MATIS IOC system is delivering products to the users. Uh, for, in most cases, except for the archive and a couple of the data sets, everybody can come to the uh, top and get all the MATIS data sets. And uh, if you want the archives or a couple of the other data sets, you still have to go to GSD, and we have all that information available on the website of how to get that. And one of the things we did in 2011 in the review was firming up the requirements. So uh, these requirements come right out of the uh, made us letter of agreement that the AA is signed in 2012, and we feel like uh, we have a, a set of requirements that made us is no longer complementary data, it's a required data set for the National Weather Service. And at FOC, the NWS uh, made us system will have a primary and backup system operated by the National Weather Service with an archive supported by NCDC. Again, just a little bit of a review of the MATIS IOC system. Uh, it's an OSNT uh, system. The IO is OSNT system that the top host. Um, the NSET Central Operations runs the processing. OS, OAR uh, is continuing to run the help desk, though we, this year we've been transitioning portions of the help desk over to NCO. And, uh, Right now, uh, OAR is running the backup to the I.O. system in the TOC. They're running that in Boulder, and that's going to change uh, next year. That will be transitioned over to NCO as well. And uh, below are the data sets that are currently available from the NWS MATA system. Uh, and, and again, I want to reemphasize uh, as the agency is putting a lot of emphasis on uh, bringing in mesonet data to uh, develop a, a national mesonet. Is MATIS is the system that is processing all the, the mesonet data that's uh, coming through the national mesonet. Here is, for reference, is a graphic of the MATIS system. The I.O residing inside of the TOC, this is the, uh, the uh, ANA boundary for the uh, servers in the TOC, our uh, public face, the uh, uh, internet, with the processing by NCO, backup by OAR, and then the users. This will, uh, the the big change here for FOC will be 
these the IO will be over at NCO rather than in the top inside the uh, DMZ at NCO. So the future activities we're doing with MADIS to complete the transition uh, include, uh, well, we've got a few more data sets we're bringing in as we're doing the transition. We're bringing in uh, one minute ASOS data will make, be made available through the, uh, we're getting the data through the FAA Tech Center and uh, the developers in Boulder are finalizing and testing all that right now. We're not going to be making METARs available. We'll be parsing out all the data into elements. And, and so it'll be a group of temperatures, dew points, um, altimeters. And so there will be no confusion that it's one minute ASOS data. I mean, one minute METAR. It'll just be parsed out elements. But it, it's we're really excited about this because this is something people have been asking for for a long time. Also, in the next, within the next month, we're going to be bringing in and making available through MADIS all the uh, mobile observations that we're, we have been working with the, our uh, national Mesonet partners, and they're going to be starting to be made available in a big way through MADIS. And uh, thirdly, We've been working with our partners at Federal Highway, and they have had a system that they've stood up for, I think it was 2003 or so, uh, and it's called Claris that was bringing in uh, the state roadway information weather systems that you see all over along the highways. And uh, so we're going to br uh, start bringing that in through maybe so we're bringing some of the data in, but we're going to start bringing more of the roadway information, like um, the icing on the on the uh, roads, road temperatures, and such. So there's a number of additional elements we're going to start bringing in that Claris has been providing, and Madis is going to begin integrating all those Claris functions. And that will, uh, we're already bringing in some of the Claris functions now, and we're going to continue iterating that uh, December, uh, December 2012, we're going to have a significant increase in the data sets we're bringing in through Claris. And uh, over the next two years, it's going to be a larger, uh, a larger amount of DOT information we're going to bring in and highway information. Um, again, in 2013 through 14, we want to get all the provider agreements in place. So we're meeting all the policy directives and all the, the needs for policy uh, for MADIS. And uh, we expect to hit FOC full operating capability where NWS is the only source for the MADIS data. People will no longer go to GSD or OARR at all. It will be one-stop shopping for MADIS. And uh, that's when we hit uh, full operating capability or FOC. And uh, GSD will continue to have a role, but it will not be in operations. It'll be to do uh, development to meet the requirements and to provide some tier three, which is the uh, deep down support of the software. So that's where we are. This is a transition project. It's uh, taken us longer than we expected, but uh, there's been a lot of changes in leadership both in OAR and weather service in MADIS over the time that this has all occurred and we've made some significant strategic changes. And at that, I'll open it up to any questions. Okay, uh, th thanks Steve. Um, we're going to try our, our new audio set up here. I, uh, just to test this out, is Greg uh, Pratt uh, out there, did Greg, did you want to comment on anything before we go to straight to the question? Can you raise your hand? Okay, Greg, I think we got you. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. We, we had you and... It's very sensitive, I think. There, there is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Greg, go, go ahead.
We see your hand up. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, yes. Go ahead, Greg. Um, Steve, I'd like to thank you. That was a very good um, presentation you made with Matus and about all of the changes that have occurred um, that uh, basically tell us where we are today. Um, one thing I'd like to mention is the fact that um, once this is set up, the you know what NWS and everybody should realize with the national mesonet and everybody being on board here. So we have the private sector, we've got research uh, community, we've got um, you know different government agencies, state and local. Um, this is a true conduit of getting things into operations faster once this is all completed. So as of 2014, um, made us operations and seeing you know changes like the. Uh, you know, making it all the way to operations will be a lot faster with this process and everything in place. Um, I think we have a great team in place to do this. Um, uh, there are a lot of issues, like Steve has pointed out, budgetary is a big one, but um, there are policy issues that we're, you know, that we're always working through. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think the team has adjusted and adapted, and um, we're looking forward to making this happen. Yeah, that's all I have. Okay, great, Greg. Appreciate that. Um, thanks. Let's try. I see Bernard has got his hand up. You want to try Bernard? Uh, okay, go ahead. See Bernard. See if we can hear you. Go ahead. Bernard Meissner. Maybe a delay here. You there, Bernard? If people have questions, just raise your hand and we'll try to connect you. And I saw Bernard, but we're not hearing him. Oh, <laughs> this seems to be pretty, oh, heard somebody up there. Can you hear me? Yes, who's this? Okay, this is Southern Region. We got a contingent of folks here. This is Ben Weiger. Uh, okay. I had a question about the budget. Obviously, it's great that we're creating this one-stop shop mechanism for data ingest uh, using getting all these networks. But uh, I want to get a little more information about you know, how this is going to be supported from an operations and maintenance perspective. Uh, and then I also had a question about why we're going to the NCO for the uh, uh, data ingest and processing. Is, does it have something to do with uh, backup support or is there some other, has something else at play? So twofold question. One is budget for 13 and beyond. Uh, <clears throat> is this going to be sort of a hybrid approach where different lines support this? Is this coming solely from the web service budget uh, at headquarters, or just how is this being supported? And what are the plans for the future? Okay, thanks, uh, Ben. Go ahead. Okay, Ben. Uh, in the letter of agreement, the 2012 letter of agreement, um, we do address budget. And after FOC, the National Weather Service has made a commitment to support the MATIS O&M uh, for $1.5 million a year. And uh, as we've evaluated this and worked with NCO, this is what NCO believes they can do this for. This is not new uh, things. This, this will support what we arrive at with FOC, not new features. Uh, so the, the NWS uh, AA made that commitment, and the CFO has made that commitment, and, the, and uh, there will be a million five transfer to NCO uh, base after FOC. Uh, the reason that we're uh, bringing the ingest into NCO is for a couple reasons, but. Um, Ben Kiger describes it best, I think, it, we're collapsing MATIS into one area. Uh, they want to keep the data sets centralized in, into the CCS and, well, and their new supercomputer, and they want to keep the ingest and distribution close to that. Um, there was some discussions earlier about 
uh, keeping it in the talk, but the talk is going through a major uh, realignment. And as we were doing the plans, uh, talk had really no idea where they were going, and we didn't want to wait until perhaps 2015, 16 before the talk finally decided where they were going with end state. So uh, uh, Dr. Ussolini and NCO said, let's just collapse everything over into uh, supporting the data processing and it'll all be under the NCO umbrella. Does that answer? Yeah, I think that's a, I think you did a good job explaining. I just had one follow-up on that. Uh, you said that money was going to be transferred out of weather service base to the NCO. Is that going to be sort of an annual commitment? That's right. Point. There's an annual commitment that's already been made. That's signed off by at the uh, uh, NWSAA level. Okay, but is that is that money coming, for instance, from the National Meso Network uh, funding that Congress gave us, or is that coming from some other area? It, it's it's coming from another area. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from Southern Region while you're on the line, Ben? Okay, just muted you. All right, that's too bad for you. Uh, any uh, uh, anybody anybody else wants to ask a question? Raise your hand. Oh, Greg. Oh, that's Greg still up there. Greg, did you want to? Well, uh, do we got it? Before we go back to Greg, is there any other person uh, that's got their hand up? Oh, there's uh, Warren Blyer. Okay, let's Warren. We're going to go to you. We thank yeah. You. Hi. Um, so we're out here in um, Monterey in Western Region. I'm just wondering, I actually have the uh, MEDA surface ops display up now, and the um, the mapping background is really pretty coarse. Like, I have a display up around San Francisco Bay, and San Francisco Bay and the city of San Francisco are kind of a couple of triangular shapes. Um, any thought been given to, like, improving the resolution of the background maps? Am I on? You're on. Yeah, yeah uh, actually, we're working on that, and um, we're about ready to implement that. So I, I don't know exactly what the schedule is, but we've gone to a, a much better background. That would and be great. Thank you. We, we haven't implemented it yet, but it's coming soon. Great. Okay, I saw Greg's thing was still up. Maybe he wanted to comment. Yeah, I, I think Greg could comment on yeah, that a little better. Put, put Greg, Greg, we're putting you back on. Greg, you there? Um, first off, I'd like to. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yes. Am I on? You're okay. On, Greg. First off, um, uh, I'll, uh, the uh, the mapping that we're going to, we've got a Google Maps display now for surface data, and you'll also be pleased to hear that we've got a metadata, it's National Mesonet, and the mobile observations come online, and Claris comes online. We have ability to display those on Google Maps as well, and we'll probably be integrating those in the future. Right now, they're two separate displays, um, but um, I would say probably before the 20s, you know, before we go um, to January, sometime this year, still, we'll have that Google Maps background out. So that answers the display question, um, and then I'd like to go back to the um, the um, money issue of um, how is this thing being funded. Um, Steve brought up um, basically that uh, you know NWS is committed you know 1.5 you know as follow-on to make sure that operations continues to be there. Um, there's also a commitment to GSD for um, that tier three support. So there's you know there's there's true operational commitment here from NWS um, to supply the funds to keep operations going. And then there's also a commitment in that um, LOA um, for GSD to continue to do research as we move forward. And then um, as a last item, um, this research as it's, um, as NWS sees that this is a needed enhancement or whatever um, for MATIS, there are service level agreements that um, we talked about putting in place to add new enhancements to this. And this goes back to uh, my comments earlier about, um, you know, really we've got a conduit now set up for pushing research operations um, a little bit quicker than um, what you guys have seen in the past. That's all excellent. I have. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Greg, for that follow-up. Uh, do we have any other question hands up at the moment? Uh, Warren looks like he wants to follow up. 
Warren, you you wanted to follow oh, no, up? No, sorry, I guess I forgot to lower my hand. No, I oh. thank you for the answer to that um, question okay. about the mapping. That uh, was it. Yeah. Um, all right, and I got a question in the room. Um, uh, so, in terms of um, the the quite you you raised that this uh, will. Uh, we're reviewing this now. It's not a, an additional redundant system. This is the system in at, at NCO for for surface data. Is that is that what is that which how you're characterizing it? It's the national system. They may have some other systems are bringing surface data in through, but uh, there there's no other system that they're getting everything through. Okay. So this so th so this is now you know this is this is it. For, yeah. for for surface and other other data, I mean there are there's, there are some uh, get profilers and so it's not just surface. Right, okay. right. There's up there's upper air and there's profiler data. There's some radar data that comes through this. Okay, okay. And so or, or data brought in from radar, it's not necessarily radar data. Gotcha. And um, and so when new new data sets come online, the the, the, the paradigm is that that GSD will be is funded to do the development to incorporate new data sets. Is that how that will work? Yeah, but we're going to have to, you know, there's no funding for new stuff right now. Not, we not have right requirements now. for new stuff. And what Greg was telling us is they're going to fund a position there that will continue to do research, and that will be their expertise. So when we do ask them to do more research to bring in something else, if, if we have funding available, GSD still plays a significant role in bringing in that. Okay. And my last So, and I want to make this important for everybody across the country to hear, too. Because we're going to operations does not mean that GSD goes away. They're still there, but they're there as uh, actually in their more proper role of doing research. Right. My, my last question is on the one-minute ASOS data. So, so you're absolutely right. This is a long desired data set. Right. It's been around, I understand, since the beginning of ASOS. It's, it's been falling into the bit bucket, I guess, except for a few exceptions. So, so it's a, but it's a lot of data. Uh, so when it comes online, I mean, is the system going to, uh, there could be conceivably a lot of demand for this one-minute ASOS. Right. So, so we've been seeing uh, the doubling of MADIS data about every three years. And we had this discussion with uh, Ben Kiger this morning. And uh, so capacity is going to have to, we're going to have to realize the capacity is going to have to be increasing uh, at, at that scale. And uh, NCO's response is that's how they expect to be scaling their uh, capacity, about doubling it every three years. So it, it seems to correspond with the plans uh, for the IT architecture. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bob, go ahead. In, 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 that, in that regard, the one-minute data, um, what, what's the timeliness on that, do you think, in, in actually being able to access it at NSA? Okay, so this is how we're, our plans on the one-minute data. We're going to make it available every five minutes. And so it'll be, there'll be one observation that'll be one, uh, have a one-minute latency. And the, mo the highest latency will be five minutes, and then you'll see another uh, refresh. Um, I see Bernard, or the Southern Region's up, hands up again. Hello, Southern Region. You want? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. This is uh, Ben Weiger again. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. I have a few questions. Uh, one is sort of a, a yes/no type answer. Uh, is uh, Enso a single point of failure? If their ingest or processing uh, does not work, we're we're going to have uh, a primary and a backup at NCO. So the primary is going to be located in Reston. Uh, that's where the uh, new uh, supercomputer is going to be, and the backup is going to be in Orlando. Okay. And uh, you know, so it's if both sites go down, it's not only Matus is down; it's a lot of other things. Okay. And then the other question I have to deal with the QAQC algorithms that are being used. Is the, are those algorithms the ones that were developed by GSD and are just ported onto the NCO, or are we using NC, NCO QAQC algorithms? And there's a follow-up to that in terms of the algorithms. So is, this, is there going to be like a meta, metadata history about the QAQC that was actually performed on the data before it gets archived with NCDC? 
Well, I can tell you this. Uh, we're, we haven't changed the algorithms in MATIS, so it's the same MATIS algorithms that we've been using all along. Now, we are going to add some algorithms as we do the final iterations of integrating uh, Claris, which is uh, two and a half years out. We're going to add the, the Claris algorithms, and they will run as well. And then we're going to flag all the observational data sets and what kind in in how they've been QC'd. And that's what Matus does today. Everything is flagged. And I believe that's archived. Greg would have to correct me if that's, but I'm I believe that's archived. Okay, Ben. All right, thanks for that. We have another uh, question here from Southern Region from uh, Victor Murphy. Okay, hey, go ahead, Victor. Hey, good afternoon. Hey, quick question for you. For the one minute ASOP data, I assume that's going to be the data that's, in, that's being ingested uh, via the ADAS system, right? The FAA ADAS? That's right. That's right. Okay. What about the approximately 20 percent of the ASOP sites that are still not on the ADAS? And I know the last the long-term plan was by about 2009, I think, we'd have all the ASOSs communicating via ADAS. Here we are in 2012. I'd say about 20% of them are still not on ADAS. It's a so good question. What's the, what's the plan for those remaining 20%? Victor, MATIS does not run uh, observational data sets in the field. You know, we're, we'll pick in what the providers give us, but we can't go out. We're not responsible for running the data set. If somebody comes up some, with some money someplace in some other program that says you've got to provide uh, the ADAS connections for those other 20% of ASOS sites, I, I'm sorry, that's not a MATIS issue. We'll process the data that we're given, but well, Steve, you know, I it's not a, Steve, I understand it's not a MATIS issue, but I think it's an overarching NOAA NWS issue or, or maybe ASOS program office issue in general. I mean, originally we were already supposed to transition all ASOS is over to the ADAS system, we haven't, you know, for whatever reason we have not. Um, is there a plan going forward to finish that up to make MATIS a more complete system? you got to elevate that up through Aquas. Okay. Um, Victor, do you have a, a follow-up? That's it. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, Marina, you have a question? Yeah, uh, I have a question from the climatological data continuity. Uh, how the new system needed will correspond to the existing OED identity data? Would it be a different format? Have been any climatological test done just to identify whether there is discontinuity in the records and uh, you know how all the things uh, is plan to be resolved? So MATIS brings in data. We bring it into a, a common format. We quality control it. We distribute it again. We don't make value judgments on whether it's climatologically correct. That's for NCDC to make. You know, it, it, we don't do cl uh, climate data continuity studies. We're not putting in stations. We're not taking out stations. We're processing data. The, the climate value has to be, those opinions have to be made by the climate scientists. This is an IT processing system. Yeah, you know, um, if if you have if climate's got a new requirement for MATIS, it needs to come up through the system. It, that's the best I can tell you here. We quality control it for a, a, a several of the standard quality controls that are built in to AWIPS right now for surface data. You know, right? Okay, maybe follow up offline. Uh, I see Aaron Sorensen has a question. His hand up. Aaron, can you hear me? Uh, uh, yes, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, like I said, this is Sean Wake in Western Region. I apologize if this uh, question isn't this isn't the right forum um, or the right people, but I'll go ahead and ask it anyway. But out here in Western Region, we have this uh, rather large database. We maintain Meso West data, and I often hear that the uh, Mavis doesn't contain all the the Meso West observations that we have. And I don't know if you guys can comment on 
on why that might be. And, and the reason why I ask, uh, the, the direction of things going, uh, we use that database to drive a lot of our observations for our um, uh, web pages. And uh, things are moving towards the, the NIDS environment. Uh, and I understand they have a, uh, a MADIS feed. Um, which, in my opinion, should become the official source for observations um, displayed on the web. So uh, my question is self-serving. Uh, I don't see us being able to move to that environment or be able to use it for our observations for web uh, if it doesn't have all the observations that the Meso West database has. So um, MADIS is actually tied to the hip with uh, the National Mesonet. And Meso West now is a partner inside the National Mesonet. And so all the data that me, uh, the uh, Meso West is getting will begin uh, coming into MADIS through the, mas the National Mesonet uh, Forum. So the answer here is that it's not happening yet, but we're working on bringing all the Meso West data in through MADIS through the National Mesonet. It's coming. Any kind of time frame at all? We're doing it incrementally. We've been bringing some of it in this year. We have a, a contract that's going out to do more of it in FY13. That contract will be in place by the end of the FY the end the end of FY12. So this is a, this is a current ongoing thing that we're doing right now. I got a I've got a comment here, Steve. If people can hear. Yep. Um, um, is the problem you're seeing is that you're missing sites, um, or are you missing observation types from Meso West? And that's strict to me, Western region. I couldn't answer that. that I I don't know. Well, see, yeah, we've been you know working with you know Meso West where we receive data from them, and we also supply our feeds right back to to Meso West. And so um, the one thing that could be a huge difference here is the, um, is the data that we're actually processing, not so much the site, but the data for a particular provider where they may have um, more variables than we actually handle now. And from what Steve said, um, working with the National Mesonet, that side of things, um, not only providers going up, but um, the variables that we handle will be going up as well. So we hope to cut that difference down, like Steve said, as we move towards the national measurement. But that may be what you're seeing right now, is that it's really a variable that's shy here or there, not so much a site. That was Greg Pratt, right? Yeah. Yes, that okay. was. Yeah, OK, thanks, Greg. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. Do we have anyone else with their hand up uh, in the room? Any questions for Greg or Steve? Um, all right. Uh, well, I want to thank uh, Steve Pritchett uh, and Greg for um, bringing us up to date on this obviously very important uh, system for for NOAA uh, and soon to be fully operational. You know, uh, it, it sounds like uh, I appreciate you pointing out, you know, the difficulties and things, and it's yet another example of a very large transition project that, uh, you know, we have had to make strategic and tactical course changes in order to make it work. Um, but there is the commitment, and, and uh, evidence is, is in the progress that Steve presented. So I, you know, I want to congratulate the team and Steve and Greg and there are many others involved for, for this and it looks like uh, you know it's great to see the different uh, organizations come to the table to, to, to do the right thing and, and you know work through the issues because there obviously are quite a, a lot of them so so thanks everyone and uh, just a quick mention uh, for September the topic um, will be the local climate analysis tool uh, LCAT uh, will be presented by Marina Timofeyeva. <laughs> All right, I keep practicing that for for months. Uh, and uh, this is another uh, very interesting tool that that uses a lot of data in order to help uh, offices 
uh, WFOs provide um, climate analysis on the local level. So I, it's a, I've seen presentation several times, and I, I think you'll you'll all be very interested in that. So uh, without further ado, thanks everyone, and we'll we'll see you in uh, in September. Signing off.